Hello and welcome to the second and final part of the go-kart build. This should be pretty straightforward. I have all the parts I need, I think, at this point. The only things left to do really are some fabrication and modification, and then some of it's just bolt-on stuff. There really shouldn't be any surprises to this, but you never know. First thing on the agenda is to cut the brake off because it's stopping it from rolling around, and that's kind of a pain. So we'll get that off, and then we will figure out what to do next. So, yeah, that sucks. Okay, the rear brake is now cut off and we're gonna go from that old friction style brake to disc brake. So the biggest issue I'm worried about is mounting the caliper in a way where it doesn't interfere with the chain. And I'm not sure how that's gonna work. It's gonna be, take a bit of finagling to get that all happy and operational. I could in theory use the sprocket as a brake disc, but I don't really like that idea simply because chains have lots of grease on them and it usually cakes up excess grease on the teeth of the sprocket, which means that grease is now getting into the pads. That will eventually cause them to not work all that well. So while it will work, yes, I don't really like the idea of it. It's, it's an option, but I think there's better options and it's only a matter of slapping it together and start it making adjustments. The biggest problem I face right now, which I think I've already explained, is that this axle, which is just a bolt, which is two or so inches too short. So I can put this on here, but it doesn't protrude enough through the hub to thread a nut onto it. So I think this was a four and a half inch, and I think this was a six and a half, or maybe seven. So the idea is to cut back further, like probably an inch and a half into the frame more. I don't really want to alter the wheelbase. I think it'd be kind of weird if the one wheel was out further. So I'm going to try to get it back enough where it doesn't look weird, but still works for my purpose. The other reason I want to do that is because the further in it is, the more likelihood I can get the clutch, chain, and brake caliper all lined up and working happily. If I put this thing way far out, like away from the engine, it's going to limit my options. There's no turning back once you cut this. So I'm really worried about it because it has to be cut like precisely flat and this needs to be welded not at any weird angle and also strong enough that this thing isn't just gonna break off. And instead of doing this, is I'm gonna remove the engine and mount the seat. That way I can buy myself some time to get more confidence to do this. All right, so I got this new seat. I just ordered a generic Manco seat and it fits really, really well. It has these threaded nut certs in the base of the seat already. So the plan is to drill holes in this brace here but the issue I'm running into is how do I hold this in place while also marking the holes? The answer I came up with is using the 90 degree welding magnets to hold the seat in place. That way I can mark it, drill it, and install it, and it should be all lined up nice and easy. Okay, got it installed, straightforward. I also deburred the two holes on each side that the previous owner had used to put zip ties through for the plywood, just because it's like, this is gonna be for a kid. I don't wanna have a bunch of jagged metal hanging out there, especially something that I didn't even do. So that's all smooth, as are these holes. I also put a couple strips of 3M tape, just double-sided adhesive tape, just to stop the sink from vibrating. It helps absorb some vibrations and also would be strong enough to supplement having one of these bolts in case one of them falls out. Now I just gotta mount the lower butt portion. This job is one of those things that I just like arbitrarily and subconsciously decided it was a lot bigger of a deal than it actually was, so I just didn't want to mess with it. So this thing's been sitting for weeks because I just couldn't get up the nerve to cut this up because I can't really undo it once it's done. But at this point, this thing's taking up space and I want to get it done. So we're just going to go for it. I bought a little angle finder to figure out if it's going to be level or not. It's kind of hard to, you know, position it on a round pole, but like as long as it's roughly where it is currently. So yeah, just going to start cutting this and then we can start mocking it up and cleaning up for welds. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but I have it marked here. I've got two locations marked. The reason I did two is because I want to cut the outer one first and just see how it is. If I jump right into the deep end and cut the further one, I can't really add material back while retaining the same structural integrity that it has now. There's no reason to just go right to that, even though that's probably where it needs to be. So I think this should be good enough. I got all the mating surfaces cleaned up as well as chamfered the pipe here. 
The bolt already has a chamfered portion, so I just cleaned up all that. So I'm gonna have to grind this lower portion down a little bit and then just keep messing with it until the angle is the same and then I can weld it. So it should be good now. Let's go ahead and set that and zero it. So that's right about same, about two, point two, point three. So given room for error, that's the same. It's right about 90, which is where it should be. And then this 89. So I'm fine with one degree thereabouts. Either way, I'm going to do a little messing around with this to get it to line up exactly right. And then we'll tack it, check the angles again, and then should be good to go. Okay, so I have it all welded. Threw a coat of paint on it, the engine plate and the areas of the brakes that I cut off. I checked the angles both during and after welding just to make sure everything's good. Everything's within 0 0.02 degrees, so I'm happy with that. I think it's a pretty good result. I think the weld will hold. I, you, only time will tell. All right, so I think I have everything figured out at this point. I've discovered that I cannot make the caliper and disc brake work in this region. There's just simply not enough space. So I think there's a simpler solution, but I have to do some research and figure something out. Another thing I find kind of strange, I don't know why it hasn't been solved already for this frame, but the nuts for the other three wheels, there's nothing to stop it from falling off. So I don't know why there's not a hole drilled in the axle for a cotter pin, or if they just need to have a nylon nut on them, because right now they're just standard nuts, which I've used a lot of Loctite on them, but I don't think that's gonna be sufficient. So at any point we could lose a wheel. So that's interesting. I got a little frustrated with the pace at which everything was happening. And I was trying to get this thing done by the weekend. That way I can ride it. You know, we're supposed to have super nice weather. I got a bunch done off camera. I installed the chain, the muffler got painted and new hardware. The pedals got stripped of rust and painted and new hardware. I got the kill switch installed. You see a little blue thing. So that's wired. I installed the new throttle cable. There was no really reason to replace the old one, except the fact that the previous owner cut the extra material all the way down to the base. So there was no adjustability, which I think is pretty trashy. So I got a new cable for that. The seat got reinstalled. This back portion, I already showed how to do it. The lower portion, all I did was, there was already brackets that are on the frame. So all I did was mark them on the seat, drill them out. And then I used these things, which I don't even know what they're called. But normally you'd like install it and then put the bolts up through it. But in order to do that, I'd have to pull the upholstery off of the seat. So I just put it up through the bottom and then just put a bolt through it. So it's not ideal, but it'll work. So that's fine. Other than that, as far as things I'm not going to show you, but I'm just going to tell you I did. I replaced all the axle nuts with nylon nuts. It turns out the Loctite did actually work pretty well. Like it was actually kind of difficult to get them off. So now the wheels won't fall off. You can't really see it, but the sprocket has a little wiggle to it and I need to figure that out. I don't think it'll throw the chain, but it definitely wobbles a lot. So that's really annoying. And other issue that I noticed is the carb doesn't really return to idle. The governor is kind of messed up. I don't know if someone's messed with it before and that maybe explain why they had that spring under the exhaust manifold bolt. So that's really sketchy and I need to figure that out because like when you start it, it starts like the clutch is engaged. So the wheel starts spinning, which is not safe at all. Lastly, the brake, what I figured out is I ordered a drum that's the same bolt pattern as this wheel, and I'm just gonna bolt it to the right of the sprocket here. That way I can put a band style clamp under here. It's not super efficient, but it will be braking on the drive wheel, which is really all that matters. So yeah, we're really, really close to being done. I'll fire it up real quick, but I just wanna make another note that the clutch that came with the go-kart is seized engaged. I could probably get it loose, but I didn't bother because I have a new clutch on hand. So what would happen is, for one, the engine didn't really want to idle. And from that, the clutch was always engaged, which made me think that it was just an idle thing. So I fixed the idle thing, but the clutch was still engaged all the time. So I just figured it was just seized. So I just replaced it and now it's fine. The hole here in the butterfly valve, whatever you want to call it, originally had a spring that ran along the governor shaft right there and that spring wasn't really doing anything so I removed it and then used the hole and then made another hole here and then just put another little spring in between there and now it returns all the way to idle all the time so that's great there's a super easy fix thankfully you have this little bracket that I actually ended up installing which I wasn't going to initially because I didn't really know what it did but yeah we're good on that
Okay, so as you can see, I don't know, maybe half throttle and up, the vibrations get worse and worse. At idle and lower speeds, it's not that bad. So like you could probably ignore it, but I can only imagine that that's gonna put extra strain on components such as the clutch or the wheel bearings. So there's no reason to ignore that issue. Well, this is gonna suck. So I have all the brake parts in. First things first, I have to mount the drum on here and then probably take the engine off. That way I can work around the frame to make mounts for the band and also the brake cable. So one mount goes to one half of the band and the cable goes to the other. And I just need to make a mount for the cable itself. So that's all gonna be a pain and means more welding. And then on top of that, the new sprocket hasn't arrived, which means I'm gonna do all this work, get it all good to go and working and then take it all apart again just to replace the sprocket again. But we'll just get at it real quick, might as well. Not really sure how I'm gonna make this work yet, but I have this blade engagement mechanism from the race mower. I'm gonna to try to take this lever out here and cut it up and make that the pivot point for the top of the brake shoe. And then the bottom is just a matter of mounting the cable to be at the appropriate height. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut this all up and see if I can make something work and then it'll just be a matter of welding it onto the engine plate there. All right, so I got it all done and honestly it was a total pain. It took a solid four hours. Lots of shimming, lots of trial and error, lots of making new spacers, lots of cutting and grinding, just trying to make everything work in this tight space. And it's good enough, I think. This arm here is the one I made. I just cut up the blade engagement arm. It happened to be the same diameter as the interior diameter of the brake shoe, and it had a cotter pin hole in it already, so that was perfect. So it's just a matter of cutting it, welding it onto the axle, and then just painting it to match. And then up top here, this arm here is the original brake arm. I was gonna use that brake cable I showed you, but it ended up being like four inches too long and I had no way to cut it down without destroying it. So I just made this little adapter here that bolted to the original arm and then also just attached right to the top of the brake shoe. As far as clearancing goes, I had to clearance a lot. Like the top of the bracket here had to get cut down so it was touching the clutch. The head of the bolt here that holds the adapter piece I made to the brake shoe needed to be ground down so that way it doesn't hit the sprocket. The sprocket's new, I got it in the mail and then got it installed. And thank you to the provider of that for not drilling the holes properly because I had to open them up a little bit to get them to line up perfectly. So it's a nice bespoke fit now, but that was a pain because it should have bolted on originally. So that wasted a solid 30 minutes. Other than that, the chain's still really loose. I need to tighten it because I can literally pull it off with by my hands and it'll definitely jump off by itself or break. So I'll have to tighten that. But really everything else is in order. Like if I hit the brake pedal, so it works. I'm happy with it. The vibration seems to be gone, obviously because the sprocket's been replaced. So yeah, really pretty happy with this. So yeah, honestly, this was a total pain. I really wouldn't want to do it again. It was just a lot to try to get all this stuff operating in this little area without touching. And honestly, there's a couple spots where it still will touch under certain circumstances. So I'm not worried about it, it'll self clearance but it's just stupid that I have to deal with this at all. So like this could have just been avoided entirely by doing a live axle. Just didn't want to go that route for the sake of money. Just a matter of lowering it down the ground, firing it up and riding it around. Okay, so that went pretty well. I'm fairly happy with the end result. I learned a lot. The majority of what I learned is it's not really worth it to try to re-engineer a lot of work. I probably should have just stuck with the smaller original tires, original brake and engine setup because it honestly was a lot of work to get that engine and the larger wheels to work with this chassis. In hindsight, yeah, probably not really worth it. It was still a budget build. I think I ended up being a little over $400 to buy and build this thing. 
So fairly cost conscious, but again, I don't know if it's really worth it. I think the only way I'd build another go-kart is if it's shifter cart, and that way it's like professional frame, like designed for an adult and ready to go and already set up. So I don't have to deal with the finicky structural stuff. So yeah, with that being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned.